This list is even more surprising when you consider the success so many of them had in other areas. They sold millions of albums, had videos in wall-to-wall -wall rotation, sold out football stadiums across the globe, won Grammys, and been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yet there are great bands here who never reached the top 40 at all, much less number one. Elsewhere, several have gotten as close as you can get to topping the Billboard Hot 100 without doing it, the runner-up spot. In fact, one of these rock legends notched five consecutive number two hits in a row. I hope you enjoy this review of rock legends who never had a number one single on the Billboard Hot 100. ACDC has sold more than 200 million albums. They have three albums that went to number one, but their highest charting U.S. single is 1990's Money Talks, which stalled at number 23. Bad Company put out six top 20 songs between 1974 and 1990, but none ever rose higher on the Billboard Hot 100 than the very first charting single, the number five hit, Can't Get Enough. Black Sabbath scored a number four hit in their native UK with 1970's Paranoid, but can never best their career high number 52 for 1971's Iron Man on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Bob Dylan has never earned a number one single, but he came close twice in the mid 60s. Like a Rolling Stone and Rainy Day Women, number 12 and 35 both went to number two. Bruce Springsteen has written a number one single, Blinded by the Light by Manfred Mann's Earth Band, but he's never had his own. Dancing in the Dark spent four weeks at a career best number two in 1984 behind Duran Duran's The Reflex and Prince's When Doves Cry. A heady mix of punk, reggae, ska, and rockabilly eventually earned The Clash double platinum U.S. album sales, but Rock the Casbah, their biggest Billboard Hot 100 single, only got to number eight. Call them Rock's most consistent bridesmaids, Credence reached the runner-up spot five consecutive times between March 1969 and October 1970, scoring number two hits with Proud Mary, Bad Moon Rising, Green River, Traveling Band Who'll Stop the Rain, and Looking Out My Back Door Long As I Can See the Light. Even if you add occasional partner Neil Young, Crosby, Stills, and Nash have still never gotten any closer than 1977's number seven hit, Just a Song Before I Go. They notched seven other top 30 singles along the way, though. Deep Purple reached number four with both 1968's Hush and 1973's Smoke on the Water, but had only one other top 40 U.S. single, Kentucky Woman, which stalled at number 38 in 1968. Electric Light Orchestra released 15 top 20 hits between 1974 and 1986, becoming radio staples for a generation. They never got any higher than number four, however, with 1979's Don't Bring Me Down. The ubiquitous Touch of Grey finished at a career-topping number nine in 1987. Before that, The Grateful Dead had never gotten higher than number 64 with 1970's Truckin'. When I Come Around never charted on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1995. Neither did 1997's Good Riddance, Time of Your Life. Green Day got closer with Boulevard of Broken Dreams, a number two hit in 2004. Don Henley boasts six top ten solo hits, but his best ever finish was at number two, Sometimes Love Just Ain't Enough, a collaboration with Patti Smith, spent six weeks stuck behind Boys to Men's End of the Road in 1992. The closest Jefferson Airplane got was the number five hit Somebody to Love from 1967. Jefferson Starship then reached number three with 1975's Miracles. On the other hand, Starship, the pop-leaning descendants of those bands, scored a trio of chart-topping hits in the 80s. Jimi Hendrix established himself as one of rock's most enduring legends with just three albums. Yet he never came close to a number one single on the Billboard Hot 100. His titanic cover of Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower only got to number 20 in 1968. You might think Don't Stop Believing made it. Nope, it peaked at number nine. How about Who's Crying Now? Surely Open Arms made it. 
Well, it got to number two, Journey's best ever Billboard Hot 100 finish. Hard to believe that 1980's Breaking the Law wasn't a hit, although it didn't actually chart on the Hot 100 at all. Somehow, 1982's You've Got Another Thing Coming is Judas Priest's only entry, and it ground to a halt at number 67 on the chart. Carry On Wayward Son, Play the Game Tonight, and All I Wanted all reached the top 20, and Point of No Return is a classic radio favorite. But Kansas hit their peak with 1978's Dust in the Wind, which went to number six. Solid classics like You Really Got Me and All Day and All of the Night were outcharted by 1965's Tired of Waiting for You and 1983's Come Dancing, a pair of number six hits that represent the career best for the Kinks. Kiss has nine top 10 albums, including 2009's best ever number two hit, Sonic Boom. Over on the singles chart, however, they never got any higher than number seven with Beth in 1976. Led Zeppelin had four top 20 finishers and another that just missed at number 21. Their highest charting Billboard Hot 100 hit was Whole Lot of Love, which went to number four in 1969. The nearest Robert Plant and Jimmy Page ever got as solo artists was 1984's number three hit, Sea of Love with the Honey Drippers. You wouldn't know it from listening to the radio, but Sweet Home Alabama was only a number eight hit, and Free Bird barely cracked the top 20. Metallica's Until It Sleeps went to number 10 in 1996, while Inner Sandman, though it remains a perennial stadium rocker, finished at only number 16 five years earlier. Go Now, featuring future Wings member Denny Lane on vocals, went to number one in the UK, but the closest the Moody Blues ever got on the Billboard Hot 100 in the US was number two after they reissued 1967's Nights in White Satin in 1972. Nevermind hit the top of the album chart, replacing Michael Jackson, but Nirvana's signature single, Smells Like Teen Spirit, stopped at number six in December of 1991. Ozzy Osbourne never found chart-topping success away from Black Sabbath either. The nearest he got was with 1992's Mama I'm Coming Home, a number 28 song on the Billboard Hot 100. Surely Love is a Battlefield top the chart, right? or We Belong. In fact, they were back-to-back -back number five hits. Pat Benatar ended up with four top 10 finishers, but never a number one. Somehow none of Pearl Jam's initial run of career-making songs, Alive, Even Flow, and Jeremy, got any higher than number 79. Their best charting song was the number two charity single, Last Kiss, from 1999. The nearest these critical darlings ever got to the top was Rockaway Beach, which stalled all the way back at number 66 on the Billboard Hot 100. They've gotten as close as you can get, scoring three number two Billboard Hot 100 hits with By The Way, Danny California, and Under The Bridge, the latter of which, by the way, was kept out of the top spot by Criss Cross's Jump. Indie rock favorites R.E.M. had four top 10 singles between 1987 and 1991 as they shifted to major label status. Their biggest hit was Losing My Religion, which went to number four in 1991. Though they've had a pair of number two albums over the years, Rush has never had a song go higher than 1982's New World Man, which finished at number 21 in the U.S. Five singles went to number 11 or higher in Steely Dan's initial 70s era heyday. The best finishing Billboard Hot 100 song was their number four 1974 hit, Ricky Don't Lose That Number. Sting has had collaborative U.S. chart toppers with The Police and in a duet with Brian Adams and Rod Stewart, but his best performing solo song was 1985's If You Love Somebody, Set Them Free, which went to number three. Super Tramp placed a half dozen songs in the top 15 between 1977 and 1982, but none got higher than the number six hit, The Logical Song, in 1979. 
The number nine Billboard Hot 100 hit Burning Down the House was an MTV staple in the early 80s and it's Talking Heads' highest charting song. Tom Petty scored a string of Billboard number one songs on the rock chart, 10 to be exact, but could get no closer than number seven with 1989's Free Falling on the Billboard Hot 100. Stop Dragging My Heart Around, his 1981 duet with Stevie Nicks, rose to number three. Brown Eyed Girl and Domino remain a consistent presence on the radio dial but neither could get higher than a career best number nine on the Billboard Hot 100 for Van Morrison. They've had two number two albums, but no single from The Who did better than 1967's I Can See For Miles, which finished at number nine. For Your Love, the number six pop song that drove blues-loving Eric Clapton out of the Yardbirds ended up becoming their best finishing Billboard Hot 100 single. If you found this video interesting, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and share my content with others.